all of my roommates were having sex and I was the only one that wasn't, but I felt the pressure. If I had to look back and tell myself one thing, it would be... What's up everyone? It's your girl Glamour Plus MD here, AKA Olivia. And today we're going over what you need sexually before you go off to college. Make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends. Okay, so college is a big change. You're moving out of your house. There's gonna be a ton of resources and possibilities for sexual exploration. And also, it's okay not to explore sexually. I didn't even have any sex until my the end of my freshman year of college and you still don't have to have sex then it could be later it could be whenever you feel comfortable i felt like there was a lot of pressure to have sex like everyone around me was doing it everyone was talking about it and there was just this um pressure to lose your virginity that term is a totally different video. I like to call it discovering my self-expression sexually. So just to elaborate on feeling pressured while having sex in college, I remember it was all on my mind a lot. Like my roommate was, all of my roommates were having sex and I was the only one that wasn't. And I also didn't feel comfortable just having sex with anybody, but I felt the pressure. If I had to look back and tell myself one thing, it would be, chill the fuck out, it's gonna happen, and it's gonna happen when it's supposed to happen. Like, don't worry about it, don't be so anxious about it. And luckily, it did. It happened with a guy that I knew for many, many years, he was my best friend all throughout high school, and we'd known each other since middle school, and uh, we were in love, and we were dating for a couple months before we had sex, and then we did, and it was absolutely fantastic. Do it at your own pace. There's no right time to have sex. One of the most important things when you do go up to college and you start to experiment sexually is actually consent. Just remember that a yes is a yes, and a no is a no, and also saying nothing at all is also considered a no. You and your partner are equally responsible for speaking up and talking about what you want and what you don't want. The bedroom is not only for sleeping in silence, it is also used for sex and self-expression. Number two is protection. Um, your college most likely will have resources for you to find protection. You know, there's a doctor on campus, most likely, or health services, and you could definitely find condoms or dental dams or maybe even female condoms which go inside the vagina. And ladies, like getting on birth control is a great idea if you are expecting yourself to have sex when you go to college. Also, plan B, it could be picked up at any CVS pharmacy or Rite Aid or Dwayne Reed or whatever it is that you have. You would want to use plan B if you do have an accident, which if you are on birth control and using condoms, then you probably won't need to use plan B. But for some reason, you know, you forget one day of the pill or two days of the pill by accident, and you have sex and you're just like super concerned about it. You know, I've taken plan B before in college once or twice and then maybe one or two other slip ups in the past 10 years. So they're really for accidents and if it's really causing you anxiety, like, oh my God, what if I'm pregnant? You wanna go take plan B as soon as possible. I think it's within 72 hours. And then also STI checks, like find out, and I'm sure, again, it's gonna be somewhere where your health services are located. Um, I would not advise to have unprotected sex unless you are in a monogamous relationship. Get STI checks before you have unprotected sex and before entering a monogamous relationship. Also, if you identify as LGBTQ or anywhere in the realm, there are definitely definitely tools or resources on campus and if not on campus then online that you can join you could be a part of you could learn more about your gender your identity your sexuality or lack thereof most of these places are open spaces and they're very comfortable and easy for you to talk to the people 
or your seniors, you know, the people that are above you. So exploring your sexuality is really exciting and it can be fun and scary. But just know that there are resources probably at your school and if not at your school, then over here with me. Make sure to leave some comments below if you have any other questions or any other concerns about college and what you can expect uh, in the bedroom or with sex. So that concludes this episode. I hope you learned something. Again, make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends and peace out good morning everyone this is penis wrinkle challenge 2020 a couple of my subscribers asked to do penis wrinkle challenge I said you know what let's do it I don't know if I can make an entire video out of it but it's definitely going to be right here at the end of this video this is a filter just FYI I don't normally look like this I just was not going to put on makeup Apparently, this is how the penis wrinkle challenge goes. You say it as many times as possible without messing up. Try number one. Penis wrinkle, 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 teeth. There it was. That was it right there. Penis wrinkle challenge, take number two. Penis wrinkle, 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 penis. That one was it right there. I think that was better though. Last try, last take, and then you know what? I would like to see some penis wrinkle challenges on my Instagram or my Snapchat. Please tag me. Take number three. Penis wrinkle, penis wrinkle, penis wrinkle, penis wrinkle, penis wrinkle, penis wrinkle, penis wrinkle. I'm getting too cocky.